Paul Newman was an American actor known for his performances in films like The Color of Money and Butch Cassidy and The Sundance Kid. He was also a director, race car driver, and philanthropist. His acting skills, blue eyes, and charitable work made him a well-known figure. Now, we'd like to know what you think made Paul Newman stand out from other actors of his time. And what's your most memorable moment related to Paul Newman? Share your stories and memories in the comments. We'd love to hear them. Stay tuned for more surprising and touching facts about Paul Newman's life and career. Paul Newman was a significant figure in Hollywood, known for his acting skills and philanthropy. His performances in films like The Color of Money and Butch Cassidy and The Sundance Kid showcased his ability to bring depth to diverse roles. He co-founded Newman's Own, a food company that donates all profits to charity. Newman also started the Hole in the Wall gang camp, providing support for seriously ill children. His influence extended beyond the screen, shaping the film industry's approach to celebrity philanthropy and setting a precedent for actors using their fame for social good. His legacy continues through ongoing charitable work and the inspiration he provides to actors and filmmakers. In a twist of fate, the lead roles for Paper Moon were initially set for a father-daughter duo, but the departure of the original director led to a casting shuffle, bringing in new faces for the film. Meanwhile, the role of Judge Roy Bean was intended for another actor who, after a night of drinking, didn't show the same enthusiasm for the script as his co-star, who eagerly stepped in to claim the part. This actor also portrayed the rebellious Luke Jackson, sharing the screen with a familiar colleague in multiple films, showcasing a dynamic range across different characters and stories. In the role of Sidney J. Musburger, he brought to life a character that was as sharp in wit as he was in attire, sharing the screen with Jennifer Jason Lee, who would later join him again in a dramatic narrative of crime and familial bonds. His portrayal of Butch Cassidy remains a highlight of his career, showcasing a blend of charm and rebellion, a performance made all the more memorable by an off-screen anecdote involving a sod desk and an unsettled liquor bill. Crossing the Atlantic in character, he convincingly stepped into the shoes of a British secret agent, despite his unmistakable American identity, proving his skill in adopting a variety of personas on screen. In the world of cinema, salaries of film stars have always been a topic of interest. This was highlighted in the classic film La Dolce Vita, where a conversation about the earnings of leading actors took place. Moving to a different scene in Cool Hand Luke, the age difference between Paul Newman and Joe Van Fleet, who played his mother, was surprisingly small, only 11 years. Their performances bridged this gap, creating a believable family dynamic on screen. The behind the scenes of The Sting revealed a lighter side of filmmaking, where Paul Newman and director George Roy Hill engaged in a humorous exchange of practical jokes. It started with a simple request for drinks and escalated to a playful feud involving an Adism bill and a chainsaw showcasing the camaraderie that can exist between actor and director off camera. In a small town in New York, a film premiere became a reward for a community's successful fundraising efforts, though its star was notably absent from the festivities. The same actor later took on the role of a pool shark, sharing the screen with other acclaimed actors in a movie that saw him earn an Academy Award. Another role had him playing a character caught in a web of espionage and prison breaks echoing real-life events that captured headlines in the mid-1960s. These roles highlight the actor's range and the diverse stories told through cinema during his career. In the classic con film, the sleight of hand and card tricks were not performed by the lead actor himself. Instead, a skilled technical advisor took over, ensuring the authenticity of the gambling scenes. This same actor took on the role of a prisoner in another movie, sharing the screen with two other acclaimed performers. In a different film set in New Orleans, he reprised a detective role, a city previously featured in a film he starred in with his wife a few years prior. In his early career, he played Bezel in The Silver Chalice, which did not do well financially. However, his performance earned him a Golden Globe for Most Promising Male Newcomer. Later, he took on the role of Lou Harper in The Drowning Pool, a character based on Lou Archer from detective novels. The name change to Harper was influenced by Newman's previous successes with movies starting with H. In the life and times of Judge Roy Bean, he starred alongside other acclaimed actors, bringing the story of the unconventional lawman to life. In the classic western, he played a charming outlaw, a role that became one of his most memorable. Behind the scenes, his hair was styled by a man whose life ended tragically in a crime that shocked the nation. In another film, he portrayed a clever con artist, part of a duo known for their close friendship, which raised doubts about the credibility of their on-screen deceit. 
Yet, the film's tension remained intact, captivating audiences. His portrayal in the Western earned him a spot among the greatest heroes and villains of film history, a recognition he shared with his co-star. In the film The Prize, he portrayed Andrew Craig, a role that had him arriving on a notable Boeing 707, the same aircraft that brought the Beatles to their first American visit. His role as Sidney J. Musburger in The Hudsucker Proxy saw him acting alongside a talented cast, including Tim Robbins and Jennifer Jason Lee, all of whom had been recognized by the Academy Awards. His charm and good looks did not go unnoticed, as he was selected by People magazine as one of the most beautiful people in 1990. On the set of The Macintosh Man, the crew often found themselves leading the charge, setting up shots, and guiding the day's work due to the director's lack of preparation. This left the lead actor feeling let down by the director's disinterest. In a different film, HUD, the lead actor's collaboration with his co-star was seamless as they both delivered performances that were in perfect sync. Meanwhile, during the production of Butch Cassidy and The Sundance Kid, the actor was instrumental in casting his co-star, advocating for him despite his relative obscurity at the time. A family man and a distinguished actor, he shared his life with Joanne Woodward and their three daughters, each forging their own path. His portrayal of Lucas Luke Jackson brought him together with fellow Oscar laureates, creating a memorable film experience. His role in The Towering Inferno showcased a unique billing arrangement with Steve McQueen, reflecting their equal status, a concept revisited from an earlier project where they were set to co-star. In the company of greats like Al Pacino and Marlon Brando, this actor stood out for his role as a con artist in The Sting, sharing a playful rivalry with co-star Robert Redford. Their off-screen antics mirrored the clever twists of their on-screen heists. In another memorable performance as a rebellious prisoner in Cool Hand Luke, his portrayal was so compelling that it earned him an Oscar nomination for Best Actor, a rare feat for a role in a film not also up for Best Picture. His talent shone through in every scene, capturing the audience's attention with his natural charm and depth of character. Challenging himself, the actor took on a comedic role in The Sting, aiming to show his ability to handle humor alongside serious performances. In The Macintosh Man, he portrayed a character hired by Angus Macintosh, a name central to the film's plot. While filming The Drowning Pool, a conversation unfolded on set about personal aspirations, where Joanne Woodward shared her life achievements, inspiring Melanie Griffith to set similar goals, though her aspiration for an Oscar remained unfulfilled despite a nomination. On the set of HUD, the mood was serious and focused, reflecting the personalities of the actors. The lead actor, known for his quiet demeanor, worked alongside a co-star who was privately navigating personal challenges. Their young colleague often seemed distant, typical for someone of his age. In a different role as a Western judge, the actor once made an impromptu visit to a Dublin bar named after his character, delighting the patrons. He even joked about a co-star when he saw her picture on the wall. Aside from acting, he shared a talent for music with another famous actor playing the piano in a jazz and blues style. A captured moment shows him at the piano, surrounded by singing and observing friends, all well-known figures themselves. In the landscape of cinema, few have achieved the honor of receiving the top three awards from the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences. Sharing this rare distinction with Frank Sinatra, this actor's talent was recognized with an Oscar for his acting, an honorary award, and the Gene Hirschholt Humanitarian Award. His role as Ari Ben Kanon in Exodus was a personal tribute to his Jewish father, showcasing his ability to connect deeply with his characters. Another memorable performance was as Lucas Luke Jackson in Cool Hand Luke, where he learned to play Plastic Jesus on the guitar, a skill taught by co-star Harry Dean Stanton, adding authenticity to his portrayal. In the rough and tumble world of ice hockey, the film Slapshot stands out, not just for its raw portrayal of the sport, but also for being the final collaboration between Paul Newman and Struther Martin. Their partnership spanned five other films, starting with The Silver Chalice, and including memorable titles like Butch Cassidy and The Sundance Kid. Off the ice, Paul Stewart, a real-life enforcer turned referee, made a cameo appearance, leaving his mark on the film's legacy and earning a unique memento signed by Newman himself. Switching from the icy rink to the jazz-filled streets of Paris, Paris Blues captures a different side of life. Here, Newman, alongside his wife Joanne Woodward, found themselves longing for the simple pleasure of a home-cooked meal amidst the Parisian winter, a stark contrast to the city's gourmet offerings that left their neighbors quite surprised. 